Hello, I'm Robert Benavides, and my topic for today is testing your code, chapter 11. I've cut this up into two parts. As always, I always recommend the uh, cheat sheet, looking at the cheat sheet before and after you start the chapter. Let me go ahead and take a quick look at this. So in the cheat sheet, it has some important topics here. First of all, it talks to us about why we should test our code, and it splits the chapter up into testing functions and testing classes. So the entire chapter is divided into two pages. It's excellent. Uh, so I invite you to go ahead and spend some, some time with the cheat sheet. So why test your code? When you write a function or a class, you can also write tests for that code. Testing provides or proves, shall I say, testing proves that your code works as it's supposed to in response to all the input types it's designed to receive. When you write tests, you can be confident that your code will work correctly as more people begin to use your programs. You'll also be able to test new code as you add it to make sure your changes don't break your program's existing behavior. Every programmer makes mistakes, so every programmer must test their code often, catching problems before users encounter them. So what's covered in this chapter? In this chapter, you'll learn to test your code using tools in the Python unit test module. You'll learn to build a test case and check that a set of inputs results in output you want. You'll see that a passing test look you'll see what a passing test looks like and what a failing test looks like and you'll learn how a failing test can help you improve your code you'll learn to test functions and classes and you'll start to understand how many tests to write for a project okay um very important uh, chapter you may not think it's important or is that very important but i've actually met with employers and they tell me this is very important. Uh, so if you're gonna be working on a very large scale project, it may end up going to QA or you may end up having to uh, do stuff like this to, uh, to test your code. So it's an important, uh, it's an important skill to, to know. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use Visual Studio Code for this. So let me go ahead and launch that. And I have multiple monitors, so it opened up on a separate monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and go file, close folder, and we'll just start from scratch, OK? So I'm going to go to file. Let me go ahead and open up a folder. Let's try it that way. And I'm going to go to my... I've. I've cut up all my files into lots of subfolders. The only way I can, um, you know, retain my sanity on this. So this folder contains everything I need for my presentation today. It's part one of chapter 11. So I'm going to select that. And that very uh, neatly puts everything uh, that I need um, at my disposal here in folders that I can expand and collapse on. Okay. So what are we going to do first of all? Well, first of all, um, let's just talk about a program as as it exists, or, and uh, let's run it. And um, after we understand how the program works, then we'll talk about um, how we can use uh, unit tests and, and test cases. And then we'll experience a passing test and a failing test. So first of all, let's just talk about a program that we can uh, work with. So let me open up. We're going to put the function that we want to test in a separate uh, file. It doesn't have to be in a separate file, uh, but that's the way um, this is designed. And you'll find a lot of times that they will be in separate files anyway. So that's the first file. Then we're going to also bring in another file that's going to use that function. Okay. So first of all, let me go ahead and just go over the first file. So in this first file, 
you know, it really doesn't do anything, right? It just has one function. Look at this. On line one, def get formatted name. It takes first and last name. Okay. It has a is it has a doc string. And then on line three, we have a formatted string that is assigned to full name, and then it returns full name dot title. Super. So now we go to our main program, if you want to call it our main program, and let's look at the logic on here. And the logic on here, first of all, line one, I commented it out because it said, you know, from name function import get formatted name. I wanted to just do it a little bit different. I just said, you know, import name function. Now, if you import name function, then you got to go ahead and then um, use that with the dot operator to gain access to the, to the uh, function, which is what I wanted to do. I like that method because when you put in the period, you can go ahead and then uh, gain access to the members. Um, so I went ahead and did that on line two. So then on, on line four, it says print Q at any time to quit. And then I have a while loop. And in this while loop, I ask for the first thing. And if it's Q, I break that it will exit this loop completely. Then I ask for last name, and if I enter in Q, I break. But if I don't enter in a Q, I end up with the first name and the last name. And what do I do? I go ahead and call get formatted name, pass it first and last, the return of which is that formatted string that I showed you, and it is assigned to formatted name. Then I print out on line 14 a neatly formatted name. Let's just go ahead and run this. So that before we start running our tests and everything, let's understand the program as it exists right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. At the bottom, it says, please give me your first name. And I'm just gonna say, you know, Bob, it's gonna be this. Just build my name today. And then it, and, um, it shows, it returns the neatly formatted name below it. Bob Benavides. Give me a first name. And there it is. And I'm just going to put in a queue to quit. So the program, um, you know, seems to be working. We just want to go ahead and, you know, give it a little extra, you know, assurance. So that's the output of this program. Let's discuss this a little bit more uh, as to, um, you know, how we could possibly enhance this. Um, I'm going to bring in the, the test, let's see now, the test name function file. And we'll, we'll talk about this in, in, uh, in just a minute. Okay. So discussion of the above. Uh, we can see that the names generated here are correct. But let's say that we want to modify the get uh, formatted name so that it also handles the middle name. Uh, you know, uh, as we do so, we, we want to make sure that we don't break the way the function handles names uh, that have only first and last name. We could test our code by running names.py and entering the names like Janice Joplin every time we modify get a formatted name, but that would become tedious. Fortunately, Python provides an efficient way to automate testing of the function's output. We, uh, if we automate the testing of get formatted name, we can always be confident that the function will work uh, when given the kinds of names that we're, uh, we've uh, written tests for. So let's talk a little bit about unit tests and test cases. So the module unit test from the Python standard library provides tools for testing your code. A unit test verifies that one specific aspect of a function's behavior is correct. A test case is a collection of unit tests that together prove that a function's behavior, uh, a function behaves as it's supposed to within the full range of situations you've, you expect it to handle. A good test case considers all the possible kinds of input a function could receive and includes tests to represent each of these situations. A test case with full coverage includes a full range of unit tests covering all the possible ways you can use a function. Achieving full coverage on a large project can be daunting. It's often good enough to write tests for your code's critical behavior and then aim for full coverage only if the project starts 
to see widespread use. So let's talk about a, a, a passing uh, test, first of all, and then we'll talk about you know, what a failing test looks like. So what is the syntax for setting up a test case? So the syntax for setting up a test case takes some getting used to. But once you've set up the test case, it's straightforward to add more unit tests uh, for your functions. To write a test case to a function, import the unit test module and the function that you want to test. Then create a class that inherits from unit test dot test case and write a series of methods to test different aspects of your function's behavior. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, what I have on the screen right here. Here's a test case with one method that ver verifies that the function get formatted name works correctly when given a first and a last name, okay? So uh, first we import unit test and the function that we wanna test, which is get formatted name. We create a class called names test case which will contain a series of unit tests for get formatted name. You, are, uh, you can name the, the class anything you want, but it's best to call it something related to the function that you're about to test and to use the word test with a capital T, right, in the class name. This class must inherit from class unit test dot test case. So Python knows how to run the tests you write. So names test case contains a single method that tests one aspect of get formatted name. We call this method test underscore first underscore last underscore name because we're verifying that names with only the first and last name are formatted correctly. Any method that starts with test underscore will be run automatically when we run test underscore name underscore function dot py. Within this method, we call the function we want to test. In this example, we call get underscore formatted underscore name with the arguments, you know, Janice Joplin and assign the results uh, to formatted name. We, um, we use one of unit tests most useful features, the assert uh, method. Uh, assert methods verify that the results you receive matches the results you expect to receive. In this case, because we, we know get underscore formatted underscore name is supported to return a capitalized properly uh, properly spaced full name, we expect the value of formatted underscore name to be Janice Joplin with a capital J, capital uh, J on here. Uh, to check if this is true, we use unit test assert equals method to pass it a formatted name and Janice Joplin. So that's what we see there on, on uh, line 11. So um, this line says, compare the value in formatted underscore name to the string Janice Joplin. If they're equal uh, as expected, fine. But if they don't match, let me know. So we're going to go ahead and run this file directly. Um, but it's important to note that many testing frameworks import your, your uh, test files before running them. So uh, when a file is imported, the interpreter executes the file as it's being uh, imported. The if block at the very bottom there on line 14 looks at a specific value. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, underscore underscore name underscore underscore, which is set when the program is executed. If this file is being run as the main program, the value of name is set to main, all right? In this case, we'll call unitest.main, which runs the test case. Very important when we're coming right here. When a testing framework imports this file, the value of name won't match main, and this block will not be executed. So uh, let's let's go ahead and run this, and um, uh, we'll we'll take a quick quick look at this. So uh, the output down below here. Notice that I got one dot. So the dot uh, on the first line of output tells us that a single test passed. The next line tells us that Python ran one test. 
and then it took, well, in my case, zero seconds, right? Uh, the final K tells us that all unit tests in the test case passed. The output indicates that the function get underscore formatted name will always work for names that have first and last names unless we modify the function. When we modify get underscore formatted name, we can run this test again. If the test passed, we know that the function will work uh, for names like Janice Joplin. Okay, so let's just go over this one more time and then we'll talk about a failing test. Okay. All right. So backing up, remember we've got a function in this file called name underscore function. It's called get formatted name. Here's the real program that we could test manually, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to write this test file here that's going to go ahead and automate the testing for us. So the first thing we got to do is on line one, we got to import unit test module. Now this is in the standard library, so we don't have to install anything. Then in that second line, we have to import the get formatted name function. Okay, the way I did it in the previous one is I just I just said import name, but then you got to use the dot, dot operator, and I just did it a slightly different way here. I'll come back to my comment here on line four in just a minute. Uh, but then we have our class, okay? And then we have the if statement, which is really, really important. I'm going to go over that again, okay? In fact, um, the important parts, uh, you know, on here would be number one, the import statement for the unit test, right? The, um, the, the class name, and then the if statement. Those are the three parts on here that we need to pay attention to. Now, on line six, we create a class. The name of this class can be anything we want, but it's recommended as a convention that we put the word test in there with a capital T. We already know that all classes, right, should begin with a capital letter and every letter after that should be capitalized. That's OOP conventions. Now, this should inherit from unitest.testcase. Without this, we will not be able to use any of the assert methods. You can test that out. And if you get rid of that, this won't work, okay? So inside of this class, I've got one unit test, right? So this function must, or shall I say this class, right? Because it's, oh, excuse me, this method, because it's inside of a class, must begin with the with test underscore. Okay. There's a difference between a convention, which is a recommendation, and a must. This is is this is syntactically necessary. It must begin with the words test underscore. So um, in this case, then on line eleven, this is where I call the get formatted name function that's in this file over here, right? And I pass it Janice Joplin in lowercase. So when I pass it Janice Joplin, it receives Janice Joplin. And it, it, um, it um, creates a formatted string and then returns it with the um, title method being applied. That is then returned and put in a variable called formatted name on line 11. Then I use the assert equals to method and I compare what is returned from that function, right? I compare that with Janice Joplin with a capital J and a capital J, okay? And let me go ahead and run this. And we see that it ran one test. We know that because it got one dot and it repeats. There's a lot of repetition on here. So we got one dot, we ran one test. Uh, it took uh, very little time and everything was okay. That's the, that's the kind of feedback that we get here. All that happens because of this if uh, on here, right? 
that if statement is really, 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 it may take a couple of readings for you to understand what's going on. So what's going on here in this file is that we're running this file directly. Okay, it's important to understand that many testing frameworks import your test files before running them. Okay, when a file is imported, the interpreter executes the file as it's being imported. Okay, so the if block looks at a specific variable called underscore underscore name. That's underscore underscore name. Now some editors show you like a little dot, I mean a little space in there, but this one doesn't. So that it shows you the, the underscores, uh, you know, separate, which is a set, which is set when the program is executed. If this file is being run as the main program, the value of name is set to main which it is. In this case, we call unitest.main, which runs the test case. So let me go ahead and just say, what happens if you don't have this? Okay, if I don't have this and run it, well, what happened? Nothing, because this is a class and inside the class, I've got a method and there's no nothing else going on here, right? You, you got the idea? So if I go ahead and put this back and run it again, it runs as expected. Okay. Now, um, I wanted to go ahead and, and print out what is the value of main of name here. So let me go ahead and show you what's in there. The value of name is main. So this is the main program. If it's the main program, then it runs unitest.main, which calls the names test class. Okay. Inside of, um, so that's an important, um, I would probably say a really important idea for you to understand, you know, what's, what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this out. Let me run it for you again one more time so hopefully it sinks in. This file right here, test underscore name underscore thing is being run directly. It, the value of name is main. In that particular case, it will run this. Let me go ahead and, and take this a step further. It's not in the book, but let me just go ahead and, because he talks about it, but it doesn't show you. I wrote another thing called test test. So in this particular one, I just want to run a couple of things. Uh, and let's just take it one at a time. The unit test is really probably not going to be using it, but um, if you want to import the name function and run that, I mean, it just what what uh, it, it just does that, right? If you import names, okay. See how see how it ran. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, a, it, it's running the program down here. That that import. Well, why didn't it do anything before? Let me go ahead and run it for you again. When you when you import name dot function, nothing happens. Why? Because there's no action going on here. It's just the just the function by itself. But when you import names dot py, I've got a while on here. It's not inside of a method. Remember, methods have to be called, right? Or functions need to be called. So when I go ahead and import names, the file called names, it's going to go ahead and run the program. OK? So let me go ahead and, and import names and see how it runs it, right? I don't, I'm not going to go through it. But then let's just go ahead and, and um, Let's go ahead and see what's inside of this program. What is the, What is name equal to in this program? In this, 
So as I can see here, maybe I should just uh, let me get rid of everything because there's a lot of stuff written to the screen. Um, and maybe I should comment these other ones out. Would it make it easier for you to see what's on the screen? That way you're only paying attention to one thing. Okay, this is Maine. Okay. This is Maine. Now, if I import test name function, this other one over here, is that going to be Maine? Okay. Did I, um, in this one here, I've got, I'm going to print, it's going to print out what's inside of that one. Okay. So let's go ahead and import that now. We already know that this file is main. So let me go ahead and run that again. So after we got main printed on there, what was the what was inside of name? Test name function. See that? Test name function. And why didn't the test name function do anything? You know, it's because um, the if, it'll only run the unit test if name is set to main. But when we imported that, we saw that name, okay, that name is set to test underscore name function. See that when I printed it, it's not set to main. So you don't get it being printed out like when I run names. Okay. So hopefully that synced in a little bit as to uh, what was going, the importance of um, understanding this if statement here. So let me go over this again. The if block looks for a special variable. It's underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. If it's equal to main, which is underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, if it's equal to this, then unit test.main is run. That causes the class or the unit test to run. Okay, so if you run this, it runs the unit test. It ran that one test and everything is okay. Okay, it's a. It seems like a lot, but it 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 it. it um, and there's several ideas going on here. I mean, we, we have to understand import statements. You know, we really we need to understand uh, the variable uh, underscore underscore name underscore underscore, and how it differ and 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 um, how it differs from main. Okay. So the whole idea here at the bottom, which is kind of like a separate idea from the unit testing, really, in itself, is understanding that the if block looks for a special variable, underscore, underscore name, which is, a, which is set when the program is executed. If the file is being run as the main program, the value of main is set to main. In this case, we call unit test.main, which runs the test case. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about a failing test. Um, so what does a failing test look like? Well, let's go ahead and close all of this so we can only be talking about one thing at a time. Don't want to get myself mixed up. I didn't say you, right? All right, so let's say that we have a new version of our function. We've changed it, we've updated. We, we, we want to go ahead and have the last name, okay? So this version should work for people with middle names. But when we test it, we see that uh, we've broken the function for people with just first and last names. This time running the uh, test underscore name function gives this output. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Well, names, uh, still pretty much the same idea. Right, that's the same as what we had before. And in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and run this. So the idea is this, we went and updated our function. We added another thing on there. 
And when we when we run our test, we're just passing. We're, we're we're calling get formatted name, but we're only passing two arguments. And you all know that's not that's not good, right? So let's just go ahead and run it, and let's experience our fail test. Okay. So there's a lot of information, uh, but let's just go ahead and go over it, uh, you know, one step at a time uh, down here below. Okay. The first thing that we see here at the bottom, the output, the first item in the output is a single capital E, which tells us that one unit test in the test case resulted in an error. Next, we see that test underscore first underscore last underscore name in names test case caused an error. Knowing which test failed is critical when your test case contains many unit tests. We see a standard traceback, which reports that the function call get underscore formatted underscore names Janice Joplin no longer works because it's missing a required positional argument. See? Error. Trace back. Even tells you what line. Error. Missing one required positional argument last. So we passed it. Well, you know, you know, it's a little bit confused. You know, we, you know, we passed it first and last, but the um, the function itself wants first, middle, and last now, right? But before it just had first and last, it thinks it's missing last, but you know, that's just the way it's the logic, you know, uh, you know, on this, right? So it provides a standard case back, a standard trace back, excuse me. We also see one unit test was run and how long it took. Finally, we see an additional message that the overall test case failed and that one error occurred when running the test case. This information appears at the end of the output, so you see it right away. You don't need to scroll up through the long output listings to find out how many tests fail. So ran one test, and you've got it, it failed. F-A-I-L-E-D, errors equals one. OK. So how do we respond, you know, to a failed test case? You know, one thing we could do is we could make the, um, in the new version of our function, we could go ahead and make the uh, uh, middle name optional. Make a, we could create an optional middle name parameter, right? That's one thing that we could possibly do. So, So here we see I have redone the function. And the design of it's a little bit different too. Uh, notice on the uh, header line here on line one, it has first, last, and middle. And now we have optional. So if we have a middle, we create the formatted string this way else then we create we create the formatted string with just the first and last beautiful beautiful logic on here and then we return the full name regardless of what so if we're past two it works you know well what happens if they pass always oh, a troublemaker right what happens if they pass uh, i just thought about this right what happens if they pass um first name middle name and no last name <laughs> okay Troublemaker, right? Uh, so, but anyway, let's just stick to the to the idea here. So it's good. That's the, uh, the names thing is pretty much the same. And then here's my test. Let's go ahead and take a look at at this uh, on here. Now, again, just remember what we did is we went to backing up a little bit. We went to our original function and we added an optional parameter. So if the middle name is passed to the function, the full name um, will contain a first, middle, and last name. Otherwise, the full name will contain just the first and last name. Now the function should work in both kinds of uh, for both kinds of names. To find out if the function still works, 
uh, like Janis Joplin, let's run the, uh, let's go ahead and run it again. Now I ran it and I ran it um, two of them on here, two unit tests. So I passed Janis Joplin and then I also ran it with um, Wolfgang Moz, uh, Mozart Amadeus, right? Did I mix up the names? Oh, I, I got mixed up. Uh, was, uh, well, let's see. Um, it should end up being Wolfgang Amadeus. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, because it's first, last, middle. Yeah, I got it, right? I got it. Okay. So let me go ahead and run this. And it ran two tests, two unit tests. And um, they were both successful, All right? Notice how it got two dots. Two unit tests were done. It ran two tests pretty fast, right? And everything is okay. All right, so that, um, that, um, that's pretty much the chapter or the first part of the chapter. Let's go ahead and talk about the trivists. So in the try this, it's, uh, it's called the uh, 11.1 .1 city country. It says write a function that accepts two parameters, city name and country name. The function should, should return a string of the form city comma country, such as Santiago, Chile. Store the function in a module called city functions. Let's go ahead and look at that. So get formatted. Notice how I just did this exactly using the same I structure that I learned from in the book. I said, if it's going to return something, I called it get. Get underscore formatted underscore city underscore country. Hmm. So then it goes and returns this formatted string. OK. Then it says create a file called test underscore cities that tests the function you just wrote. Remember that you need to import unit test and the function you want to test. Let me just go ahead and show city and then test cities. Of course, city is just the program that we would have run. You know, if we wanted to do manual testing, I mean, we could just go ahead and run this like this. Uh, maybe get rid of the uh, maybe a clean run on here. So it returned a neatly formatted string Santiago Chile. Okay, because it called get format uh, get formatted underscore city thing. He passed city and country. It returned it and placed it into formatted underscore city underscore country, and then we go ahead and print that out on line seven. Okay, so fine. Let's run our test. Let's 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 create our test file. So the first thing we do is on line one, you know, we go ahead and have to have the import to the unit test module, which is in the standard library. So we don't have to install anything to use it. Just make the import statement. Okay. So this is the file that's going to verify that calling your function with the values such as Santiago and Chile will result in the correct string. When we run this, we're going to make sure that that it passes. So what we got to do is right after the import statement, we got to go ahead and import the function. You could have just said, you know, import city underscore functions and then use the dot operator, but we're we're specifically importing get underscore formatted underscore city underscore country. Then we create this class, and then we have the if statement that we need if we want to run this test. Okay. So we have one unit test, and what it does is it calls the get formatted, get underscore formatted underscore city underscore country, and it passes Santiago Chile in lowercase. Then we go ahead on line 11, we um, um, use the assert equals to method. And we won't be able to use this line, line 11, 
unless we inherit from, on line five, notice how we inherit from unit test dot test case. We're inheriting from test case. If you don't have this, you cannot have this. So the assert equals to method compares city country, which we got as a return from the call to the method with what we expect. Santiago, Chile formatted as we expect it to be. So this should run. All right. It's, everything is uh, fine. It's a, a really good first example on here. Let's go ahead and look at the next example. In our next example, 11.2 about population, it says modify your function so that it requires a third parameter. Notice how this is very parallel to what we, he taught us in the book. This is really great. You remember we, we, we did the, the, the middle name as optional? So now we're going to go ahead and put in um, you know, population uh, on here. So it should, it should now return a single string in the form uh, city in the form city country population xxx you know um and of course we're going to we're going to cause it to fail and then we're going to go ahead and fix it okay so let's go ahead and and um let me go ahead and just load up all the parts on here so here's our our function we're going to end up making this optional a little while but for right now let's just say population okay and uh, it's creating this um, formatted string. The placeholders puts that in there and it returns it, okay? City would be if I were to be running this without any kind of um, formatting or without any kind of testing, I'll go ahead and run it. Notice I do have an error, which is fine because it's missing a positional argument. Let's go ahead and look at our test. In our test, let's go ahead and run it. And notice how we got an E, a big E, an error, and a trace back. And the problem is on line nine. When we call that method and we pass it to, it don't like it. This is exactly the same idea that we studied. It says, hey, you're missing one required positional argument. You're missing population. We ran one test and one test failed. Great, so what we gotta do, you know what we gotta do. We've gotta go ahead and rewrite this or modify this or update it so that it can take population as optional. And then we're gonna run the test and then it's gonna be successful. Okay, so let me go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go ahead and um, look at the second version of this. All right. So notice how I got lazy and I didn't call it population. I just said pop. That was good enough, right? And I assigned the empty string to it. So it's optional. So now it's going to work if I pass three or if I pass two. And I, in order for it to work either way, you have to have an if statement so that if there is a population, then you have all three things being used to create a formatted string. Otherwise, you use two things to create your formatted string and you return it. Here is my, uh, my uh, program if I wasn't using any testing, which um, we're not going to spend any time there. I'm going to go ahead and go directly to the test. And in the test, notice how I'm going to go ahead and test for both of them situations. I'm going to test for, um, I've got two test cases, right? Or unit, two unit tests, right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, pass two things and then pass three things. So let me go ahead and run this. So we ran two tests, so we got two dots. And everything is fine. So now we've completed 
the first part of uh, chapter 11 on unit tests. Really, really, really important thing for uh, people that are going to be working on large scale projects, uh, you know, or if you're going to be working in a uh, QA uh, department. A lot of people, when they first start doing this, they say it's boring, it's not fun, you know, but it's very important um, that the programs be tested um, for, um, you know, for them to be considered professional level, right? And it's an important uh, thing that employers are telling me that they want students to know about, all right? So, uh, I want to thank you very much. I hope to see you in the next video. In the next video, we'll be talking more about this. And we'll be talking about uh, testing your code using classes. And we'll introduce a few uh, other uh, new concepts as well.